Good morning. Today I wanted to get to talk about two different types of refried beans that we really enjoy. Refried beans are so much easier to make at home and they taste a ton better than what you're going to get in a canned product of refried beans. Um, one of those versions is a pork product and so of course it's not vegetarian and it's, it's more difficult to get pork products here in the Middle East but man it's a great flavor and we really enjoy it. It's traditional to my family where we use some uh, manteca or some baking grease to flavor the beans with a bit of salt. The other version that we use, which is the vegetarian version, and of course a lot easier to get almost anywhere in the world, um, is flavored with some onions and garlic and cumin. I'm gonna show you both of those methods today, as well as how to cook up your own beans from dried so that you can do it from scratch. All right, first we're going to take some of our pinto beans. I just keep mine in a huge jar like this. And we're going to Take a bunch and get it into our pot. Oftentimes I'll make a huge quantity because I like to um, cook up a bunch and then freeze them in little individual containers and stick them in the freezer so I can pull them out whenever I want. And as long as there's no liquid in there, they defrost really quickly. So I'm gonna kind of, kind of give a little look here just to make sure there's no little stones in here. The way that um, beans grow, oftentimes they can get stones stuck in there, especially pinto beans. And then I'm going to just get a bit of water and make sure I'm rinsing them off a bit just to make sure I'm getting any extra dirt that might be on them off, any dust or whatever. And then I take that foggy water and just drain it off. And I like to rinse it just a few times just to make sure that they're nice and clean. All right, so after I've rinsed them, I'm going to put in a bunch of water just like this, and I'm just gonna let this soak on my countertop for about 24 hours or so. Um, we do that for about 24 hours simply because it helps to release some of the toxins that give us gas and, and discomfort when we eat beans. So if you do that soaking, you'll see a bit of a scum layer on the top here after about 24 hours, and we'll just drain that off and then we'll prepare our beans further. But for now, this will kind of sit here on my countertop, release those toxins, and help us to be able to absorb those nutrients better. So see you in 24 hours. All right, 24 hours later, these are our beans. You see that we've got all this foamy stuff here and really murky water. That's all the stuff that's likely going to hurt our stomach. So we're just gonna pour that off. And I'll get all that out and do a couple of rinses of water to make sure we get it out. All right, there are two different ways you can cook up your beans. One is a pressure cooker and it takes about six to nine minutes, but then you also have to kind of count in the fact that you have to release the pressure or you can just cook them on the stove top as well. Since not everyone has a pressure cooker, I thought I'd probably just cook them on the stove top here. So you can see I filled them up with excess water and I put in quite a bit of salt, um, about two or three of those, kind of just like five pinches of salt. And then I just put it on low, put the lid on and cook it for like an hour or two and just kind of let it sit there and, and forget about it for a while. Um, and then it's, it's done and they've got nice soft pinto beans. I'll show you in a few. All right, next I'm taking my beans that I've cooked and I'm taking them and putting them into my food processor. Different families do it differently. I found that this is the method that works the best for me. I'm not getting a lot of the juices. Um, I haven't decided what I believe in the school of thought of the, the bean juice, of whether it has gases in it. Um, and if that makes you more gassy or not, but man, my dad loved this, <laughs> that liquid. Um, and he's like, don't throw it away. Um, but since I've soaked it for 24 hours, I'm not being super cautious with it just because I know a lot of that bad stuff has already come out. All right, our beans are done cooking and right now we're just kind of letting them cool a little bit. Um, the first step we're going to do into making our refried beans is that we're going to chop up a bunch of small um, pieces of onion and garlic. And the smaller the better because we're going to cook them up really soft and get them lots of flavor and add those to our beans. So we're going to get over here to our stove and start on that. So first thing that I've done is I've added mm, maybe like a couple teaspoons of some oil into this cast iron skillet. Then what I'm going to do is I've taken these onions and garlic pieces and I've chopped them up fairly small. The smaller the better really, but um, I'm not super particular. We're just gonna add them on here. And we're gonna cook these up until they start getting a little bit caramelized looking, until they look a little bit, um, like they're getting soft, and we'll get to that point. All right, this is about what we're looking for our onions and garlic to look like. See, they're a little bit caramelizey. they're a little bit browned. Um, we're not too round, but they're definitely getting some sweetness out. 
Next, I'm going to take one teaspoon of cumin, and I'm just going to sprinkle that around and cook that in a little bit as well. I found that when I was learning how to do a bit more of the Indian cooking, um, they oftentimes have you cook your spices onto your, your onion and garlic like this, and it releases a ton of flavor. Um, and so it, it really it really melts things together. So I highly recommend doing that and letting that sit for just about one minute cooking and then turning off your heat. All right, next we have our consistency that we like, and I'm going to add that um, garlic and, and onion and cumin that we cooked up. Alternatively, if you feel like you're just running out of time, you just wanna eat those beans and you're not really feeling like getting a ton of flavor, you can use um, granulated onion and garlic, and that works out pretty well too. It has some decent flavor. Um, and so I'll do is that sometimes. Um, I've made sure that I've salted my beans really well, and so I don't have to worry about salting anything right now. I've also set aside some of these other beans so that I can do the, um, the baking grease beans. And so we'll do those in just a moment. But first, we're going to put the lid back on. I'm just give it a couple pulses. And basically our beans are done. So pretty well salted and everything is incorporated. So here's our vegetarian beans. We love them, they're wonderful. Let me show you how to do the bacon grease ones. Here we have the beans that I took before and all I'm going to do is get just a little bit of bacon grease and then we're gonna melt it in the pot and you're done. And that's basically how we make my family's big, uh, traditional beans. I also like to add a couple of those solid beans. And in this quantity, about this big, I do it about that much. All right, so now I'm just taking that baking grease and I'm just melting it into my beans and warming up my beans again, now that we've pureed them and added that baking grease into them. From here, they're pretty much ready. You can reheat them up as much as you like and um, they're delicious. So enjoy these beans, um, whether they're vegetarian or the baking grease type. They're really awesome and uh, not too bad to, to have on hand either for all those, those Mexican food munching nights.